Well, it's cold and rainy outside, and uh, it's time for us to get some beef. And of course, around here, we do things a different way. So come with us as we butcher a cow. Well, we're field dressing a cow today, so I want to give you a few disclaimers. First of all, you will see killing, you will see blood. And this particular cow may have been bred, so there's a potential to feed us inside. Now, the reason we're doing this is because during the COVID season, the processors were shut down temporarily or really limited, so they're way behind on dates, and you're looking a year to two years out to actually get a date at the processor. This particular cow belongs to an Amish friend of mine, and it has a bad attitude, if you will. Its uh, temperament is not very peaceful. It can be dangerous. It's starting to get more dangerous. He has children. It's not good to have those animals around. So he's calling it from the herd. So we're going to kill it humanely. It's the best way to deal with that and not pass on those genetics. Now, we also have permission from my Amish friend to actually film this, but you'll notice we're going to limit his exposure on the film out of respect for he and his family. So come along. You can't do it without this though. Yeah. It's not near as handy. So here's the cow, ready for us to skin him and eviscerate him. She's lying peacefully on the ground. We've got blocks under her back to keep her vertical like that. It makes it easier to, uh, to work on the inner belly if she's propped up like that. All right, we gotta do a quick word about knives here. When people show up to the farm to do a butcher class or something, I tell them to bring sharp knives and they really don't understand what I'm talking about. A sharp knife is a knife that basically you can take a receipt of a piece of paper and cut right through it. And it should be a clean cut, not a jagged, ripped cut. So that's sharp, and you should be able to shave the hair off your arm too. Now these knives we have here, um, this is a, a very small knife, a lot of times used for chicken butchering, but I also have it in my arsenal for pretty much everything when you need to get into a tight space. This boning knife right here, 99% of the time I use that knife for almost every single animal I do. It's a six inch boning knife. This is another uh, very popular knife that people use for larger animals like the cow. 
And then these are skinning knives. You notice the difference in these. First of all, they don't have points on them. This is bent back and this is specifically so you don't pierce the hide as you're skinning and you can get that to flow on the back side of the hide and you'll see that later in the video. This is a boning saw. This is a 16 inch. Uh, it's great for smaller animals. For larger animals, you probably want a 22 or a 25 inch. And the other thing I highly, highly recommend is carbon steel blade. Carbon steel blade is significantly harder and will stay sharper longer than a stainless steel blade. And all you've got to do is clean it well and put olive oil on it when you store it. And as you notice, I store it backwards. I don't want that blade to get dull and I don't want people to get themselves hurt. So when I store this, it's stored inside and it's stored backwards. So I will say essentially that 99% of my butchering is done with these three knives. Even though I have a lot more in my butcher kit, these are my go-to knives for almost everything I do. So now let's see them in action. got a full belly so we got to be real careful here we took her right out of the field so she uh, she wasn't with we didn't withhold food overnight obviously which is typically what you do with animals before you butcher them Push it in. Oh, there that's right. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Look at me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sean, looky there. Is that a calf? That's a calf. Oh, well, let me get that on film there. I'm gonna lose that. We got a little calf down there. Can you see it from? Is it? Um. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't film. Danielle films. She's gonna wonder why there's cow guts all over this too. Okay. Boy, that's a pretty good size. Look at his horn nubs. Yeah. He's starting to form hair right around there. Yeah, he is. It's interesting how yellow those nubs are. Yep. Bull calf. Okay. Well, you missed out then. Nope. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. He wouldn't have been a good bull, huh? <laughs> well, I'm afraid she would have been a bad mother or something. Oh, yeah. She's all emptied out. We got to pull the hide off the, the neck there. Uh, we got everything out of the inside. Now we got to cut it down the back. We got to cut it right down the middle of the back. So we'll pull that cape off the head there and decapitate. But we've got to cut right down that back. So we've got a hand saw that we can use. So he went and got a bigger saw because mine's kind of small and uh, that's what you need for this cow especially up at the top before it gets into the split. But if you look right here he's trying to get down and like he said 
this cord right here, that's the spinal cord. So you want to try to stay centered. One way to do it is to have one guy in the back and then one guy in the front. And he's watching to see if you're staying on center. And we cut right down the middle there. So we'll keep cutting here. And it's not easy work, so you gotta take breaks. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the cut now. You see that? Nice even right up the spine. Again, it's it's hard to stay on line, but oops, that's the wrong side of the beef. There you go, there's the spinal cord. Cut right up that spinal cord. So my friend is highly skilled. And then uh, we took the, the, the hide off, we got the head right there. I went ahead and pulled the tongue out, and it's over there in the awful bucket with all the rest of the awful. We'll take a look at the bucket over here. We got tongue, we got liver, kidneys. So I'm home now, and uh, when we packaged up the cow there after we butchered it, I wanted to make sure on the drive home with all this rain, there's a lot of road spray and you pass semis and stuff, you don't want that meat to get dirty. So I wrapped it in blankets here. As you can see, there's the meat. I wrapped it in blankets and then I laid the hide on top of it. That hide is really heavy. It's probably a good 50, 60 pounds, uh, maybe up around 75. So that kept the blankets down on top of it and protected it from all that salt spray coming off the, uh, off the roadway. Well, here we are in the Redgate Farm meat locker, also known as our garage. Now, we actually have to prep this garage. We butcher at a specific time of the year that we can maintain a temperature in this garage, and we're looking between 32 and 40 degrees. The way I do that is I open the garage doors at night. Our garage is underneath the house. It's underground. There's a cement retaining wall right there that's got earth. We've got concrete on the bottom. So when I let that cold air in at night, it cools off the concrete. And uh, then during the day when it warms up, I shut the garage door and it keeps it cool in here and stabilizes the temperature. And I've got a lot of thermal mass down here. So my temperature, I've got a thermometer on the back shelf at this level right here because I don't want the, uh, you know, heat rises. I don't want the top to spoil and the bottom to freeze. So I keep that thermometer about right there. Right now it's 34 degrees. It's perfect. I love it in here. Now I back the truck in here. And one thing about that is I wrap that meat in clean sheets that are specifically for this on a uh, cleaned mat to try to keep this meat extremely clean. When I take it out of the truck, I have to be very careful uh, that the clothes, the aprons are all clean too because I don't want to have any uh, introduction of bacteria onto these that I don't uh, need to. Now for hanging, I hang these in hooks by the gambrel tendon in the back. Now, you'll notice on that one, as I was skinning, I accidentally cut the gambrel that was my fault, and when that happens, you need to, uh, well, we put baling twine up there, but you need to basically gamble it yourself and get that hook. Now, as we come across here, I quartered this, and so here is my high-tech uh, hay hook. It's a sterilized hay hook. We just took our hay hooks, we sterilized them, and uh, we use those as meat hooks. They don't need to go buy expensive, fancy meat hooks. Now, this cut here is at the seventh rib, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh rib, cut through. You have to do a bone saw. There's some soft bone there. And a bone saw through here, which is the, uh, the backbone. And this is nice because it's a lot easier to handle quarters than it is to handle a half. A half, this half is 200 pounds. So when you cut it up like this, you're, you're breaking it down to about maybe 100 pounds uh, a piece, or I would say this is probably 75 and that's 125. So it's a lot easier to handle and hang up when you do that and you don't lose any meat because it's quartered properly. But again, 34 degrees, I'm gonna try to maintain this by manipulating my garage door up and down based on the temperature outside and inside and hopefully I'll sit right at that 34 degrees, that's perfect. I'm gonna age this about 10 days. What's happening inside that meat is that enzymes are breaking down the meat fibers in order for it to soften and tenderize that meat. And in the end, I'll just shave off that dry portion there and you'll have real nice tender meat on the inside of it. So that's it for the Redgate Farm Meat Locker. So here we are out in the barn. We've got the meat hanging in the garage and we've got our friend Paige here who came to take the hide. She's gonna to try to tan the hide 
she's taken uh, the mom's skull and the calf skull, and she's going to clean those up and make those display items. So we don't like anything to go to waste. Right now, she's trying to get all the trimmings off the head because there's a lot of meat on there. Aiden is actually cutting up the calf, and that's going to be dog food also. So nothing here goes to waste when we butcher a cow. Well, that concludes part one of butchering the cow, and we hope to hang this about 10 days, and when we do, of course, we'll film the cut-up. So stay tuned, and you'll see more. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's content. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And if you have, tell a friend, hit the like button, and leave a comment. We really like those comments. Otherwise, we'll see you back next time here at A Different Way. Cheers.